Hey guys, welcome. My name is Allison and today I'm going to be giving you a tour of my bathroom in my modern Japanese apartment. So by modern, I mean the bathroom area is like fully renovated and it's really nice. At least to me. So what I'm about to show you is basically what you can expect to get out of a bathroom in a newer apartment here in Tokyo, especially the ones that are over 20 square meters, I'd say. So some bathrooms here, they're either unit baths or they have just the sink and the shower and bath. But in mine, everything is separate. So here we have the sink and toilets behind you and the shower rooms right here. Actually, by Tokyo standards and relative to the size of my whole apartment, I think the bathroom's pretty big. And I did actually get this apartment basically because I like the bathroom area. So I thought I'd show it off to you guys. Of course, if you go cheaper or older buildings, then the bathroom's not going to look like this. It's going to be a little, you know, dingier. But let's just show you. All right, so let's just start with showing you guys what the whole bathroom looks like. And I'm going to go into details about every single one. So we have my washing machine right here. We have a sink. I put a little bookshelf here that's acting as storage. And then right here we have the shower room. It's a pretty nice room. I really like it. And I have a fancy little panel, which I'm going to show. And then right behind the store, I have the bathroom, or the toilet, I guess. So let's start with this room. So actually, I do have one of these high-tech, like, fancy toilets, and I really like it. I'm going to show you why. So right here, I have two toilet paper holder things, and I put my phone here and stuff, because you need your phone when you, you know... And then this is the toilet panel I have. It's pretty good. So I'm going to go through all the controls. This is what just stops everything. Here is to wash your butt. And this is to wash your lady parts. And by pressing this, you can control the power of the water. So if you're not used to it, you can do it just on like one or two. And if you really want to get in there, you can go up to like five. And over here is actually what I really like. So right here it says temperature settings and we have one setting for the toilet seat right up here and then this is the water temperature. So for example, let's change it right now. It's on medium, but it is summer. So actually I'm gonna keep it here on low. So what that does is when the toilet seat is closed like it is now, it's gonna keep the toilet seat warm. In summer, I don't care too much about it, but in winter, this is just, it's amazing. Also, the bidet stuff comes out here, <laughs> and the water temperature setting is for these things. You know, in winter, you don't want cold water. <laughs> and these things are just for, like, energy-saving things. You can put on a timer, and this is, like, you can clean the nozzle for the bidet and stuff. So really, just this, and this is what's important to me. And it does have the sink that comes out, so let's say we're going to flush it. And when we flush it, we also have two options. We have big flush and little flush, so big is for, like... <laughs> And little flushes for, you know, not. So let's do little flush. Yeah, so just like that, the water comes out here. And you can wash your hands, but actually there's nowhere to put soap, really. So I don't use this, personally. You can. What I do have in here, however, is a deodorizer. So, good for bathroom. And above it, I do just have a little storage area built in. I'll just show you. Keep toilet paper and stuff in here. Not that fun. Okay, so next to that room, we have the laundry room. <laughs> or it's just a washing machine. It's not a room. So I do have a glass top one because, I don't know, I think it's fun to see inside. Wee. So washing machines actually do not come built in with most apartments. You have to buy your own after you move in, usually. So you can get like really cheap ones. I think the cheapest you can do new is about $150 maybe. And you can go all the way into the thousands if you get like the dryer functions too. I do not have one of those, but mine is pretty nice. Mine can fit up to seven kilograms of clothes, which I like because I don't want to do laundry every day. And these are the functions it has. Here we have a yoyaku option, which is like a timer, I guess. <laughs> so you can like set it. Let's show you. So here you turn it on and then we're going to choose. So let's say we want this here. It's going to set a timer and these are different courses. So like this is like gentle. Then if you press set there, you can do it by hours. It's like nine hours later, it'll turn on, 10 hours later, that type of thing. And then actually mine does have this version. It's kind of like a dryer. 
It's not really a dryer though because there's no heating or anything in it. It will just spin around the stuff really fast basically and get rid of the water that way. So it's good for like towels and things, but I don't really use it often. And then this, there's just so many different types of courses. We have like normal, we have like if you're in a rush, we have gentle, blanket, fashionable clothes, like dresses and stuff. So let's look inside. This is the detergent thing. So you just pour it in there. And it's pretty standard, but I do have two of these which collects lint, which I haven't cleaned in a while. So I bet there's lint in it. All right, so that's that. And then above, I just have this storage rack I got from Neatory for about like 30 bucks, really cheap, but I definitely recommend it if you don't have any other where to put this stuff. Okay, next we're gonna go on to the sink area. A separate sink was really important to me because I do like my makeup and all my skincare and stuff with that. So this is my sink area. Hi. So the sink's pretty simple, you know, hot water, cold water, and you can detach this, which is nice. You can also change it, ooh, <laughs> change it to shower mode. <laughs> and up here, this is like the best part of it, I think. So it's a mirror, but there's also storage behind it. So you know I have my makeup and stuff here. And more down here, up here, to the side. And you can also plug things in right here, and there's a light switch. Great for doing makeup. And then down here, there's also some storage, just, you know, open space, basically. Messy. And to the side, I bought this little side cart thing for more storage, because, you know, here's my little towel hanger. And now into the piece de resistance, the bathroom room. I really like this bathroom. It is so nice, and I'm going to show you why. So really quick, this is what it looks like again. So let's start with this touch panel out here. I have two panels. So like this one heats it up. This one, super amazing. It's a clothing dryer. And then this is just the normal ventilation. Usually I keep this on all the time. And this like blows wind. This is ventilates the room. And you can set a timer for how long you want it to be on. For example, the heater or the clothes dryer. So the clothes dryer is good because in Japan, you know, you don't have dryers in your apartment unless you have those expensive units, which I don't. So what we're controlling is that panel thing up there that's where the air comes from and you just hang your clothes on this rod right here to dry them and you can get your clothes dried in about maybe four hours three hours depends how many you have really so moving in I do have a stool because in Japan it's like traditional to sit down when you bathe I just like it because I hate standing and then we have some storage happening here just with shampoo and stuff I have a mirror hello this isn't that great but you know it's fine you could also move it up here if you don't want to sit. And this, it's just the on and off for the shower and for this thingy. But this isn't actually what you're going to fill the bathtub up with. Or well, you could, but you don't need to. Because the bathtub has its own panel. So we're turning it on. Yeah, actually my screen's, <laughs> it's mostly broken. And I just haven't gotten around to asking for it to be fixed. Because I don't need it to be fixed. Because I'll show you why. So this is the on. This keeps like the temperature setting saved. This, I'm not gonna press it because it will like emergency call my other panel in the kitchen. Like if I fell or something in here, yeah, I don't need it because I live alone. But So oidaki is going to like reheat it. And then this is just to get the bath going with all the settings you have saved. So you can change the settings down here. This one is going to do the like shower temperature and this is going to be the bath, both the temperature and the volume. You can also just add like a little bit of hot water, a little bit of cold water here, and you can change the volume of this speaker thing because it will talk, and I'm going to fill up the bath a little so I can show you. So this is where the water is going to come out. So let's just boop. All right, and this, this thing's going to talk to me, which is why I don't need the gum in the screen. So let's just do, let's change the volume. I don't need a full bath. So now it's on the lowest volume level. So let's just do that for now. Jido. And here comes the water. So as you can see, it will just fill up the bathtub on its own to the predetermined volume lines. 
but I'm gonna stop it. And that's the water, but I'm not taking a bath, so bye-bye. And that's just how it drains out. I also have this thing, which is a cover, which I put on when the bath water's there and I'm taking a shower, so it'll protect the bath water from getting like shampoo in it. And it'll also stabilize the temperature. So also when you have it on the Jito setting and like the tub is filled with water and stuff, it's going to keep the bath water at the same temperature, which is amazing because it'll just keep releasing a little bit of hot water whenever it senses that the water temperature has dropped. This is the drain. I'm not gonna show you it because it's kind of gross. This is the worst part about Japanese bathrooms, just cleaning it. And this is gonna depend on your specific unit, but I think most of them now, the walls are magnetic, or at least one side should be. So because it's magnetic, I have these things on. You can find some really nice unit bathrooms like this that have a TV built in, but honestly, I wouldn't even want that because I just put in my iPad right here and I just watch YouTube. These are just from Amazon, really cheap, awesome. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. What did you think? Do you like it? I really like my bathroom area. It's a really big space for Tokyo. If you wanna see a tour of my whole apartment, I did make a video showcasing every last detail of it a few months ago. So I'll leave a link up here. So go click on that if you want. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Allison. I post a new video about my life here in Tokyo as a grad student every single week. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content about this in the future. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.